Hello, and welcome to this section on hybrid environments and VPC peering. For this section, we're going to be focusing on our physical and networking layer, and you will notice that throughout most of the Orion papers, you'll be able to access hybrid environments from almost any page. However, it will be most relevant if we drill down into our region, into our availability zones, and then again into our VPC networking, because hybrid environments and the particular services that we're going to talk about really concentrate on connecting our VPC or or other various elements of our AWS account with our on-premise servers. And again, we also will talk about VPC peering at the end of this section. But for now, let's jump into hybrid environments. And for those that don't know, a hybrid environment really allows you to combine resources located in the AWS cloud with resources located on-premise and use them as if they were located in the same environment. So first, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about a virtual private network. So, just as a side note, this is a site-to-site -site example, meaning the architecture and the diagram that I have laid out here. So it's just important to understand what we're looking at. But for now, let's talk about VPN essentials. So a virtual private network enables the ability to extend a subnet from one geographic location to another geographic location on two separate networks. Extending the subnet allows the network at location A, which could be our VPC subnet, to communicate internally with all resources at location B. So that could be our on-premise network. This is essentially extending the on-premise network to the cloud or the cloud to the on-premise network. For AWS, this allows us to communicate with all resources like an E2 instance internally without the need for public IP addresses or an internet gateway. It also provides an additional level of security by ensuring that traffic sent using the VPN is encrypted. The VPN connection has two parallel routes, which are IPsec tunnels, which is for redundancy. It's also important to understand that only one virtual private gateway can be attached to a VPC, just like only one internet gateway can be attached to a VPC. However, it is also important to note that a VPC can have both a virtual private gateway and an internet gateway attached at the same time. So let's just recap what is going on here with a virtual private network. What we can do is we can take a subnet within our VPC and in essence extend that subnet through the VPN connection to our on-premise data center. And what can then occur is that our servers and our on-premise data center can communicate internally with EC2 instances or other resources in our private subnet over here in our VPC, meaning that the communication can occur using private IP addresses and without having to go across the open internet and in through an internet gateway. Now, there are several components that we have to be aware of when setting up and configuring our VPN. Those are customer gateway, the virtual private gateway, the router, and then the actual connection themselves. So over here in the AWS console, to set up and manage this, we need to go and select VPC. Now, I don't have an on-premise data center to actually connect to here, so everything I'm going to talk about and show you is just going to be theoretical as I won't actually be setting up a physical connection. However, to access this whole area, it is going to be down here under VPN connections. So first, let's talk about the virtual private gateway. So a virtual private gateway acts as the connector on the VPC, meaning the AWS side of the VPN connection. The virtual private gateway is connected to the VPC. So much like you would create and connect an internet gateway to a VPC, a virtual private gateway is very similar, except it is used for a VPN connection. So you can create one by simply going to virtual private gateways, click on create virtual private gateway, just give it a name, VPG, and then click create. Then all you need to do is actually attach it to a VPC, and we'll select the lab VPC here, and click yes, attached. So we now have a virtual private gateway which is attached to our VPC. So it's extremely easy to create and attach just like you would a internet gateway. But as we should know, is that this is going to be the connector on the VPC or the AWS side. So next, let's talk about the customer gateway. So a customer gateway is a physical device or software application at the on-premise location that acts as the connector to the VPN connection. In your AWS account, the customer gateway component, meaning right here, is where you configure the public IP, meaning the internet routable static IP address of the physical device or software application at the on-premise location. 
So I can create a customer gateway here, but I don't currently have a static public IP address because I don't currently have an on-premise data center with an application set up to handle this. But this is where you would come to configure this if you did have such a physical device or software application. And you would put in the public static IP address here. So it's just important to understand that just like the virtual private gateway is the connector on the VPC side, the customer gateway is the connector on the on-premise side. So now let's talk about the actual VPN connection itself. Well, the VPN connection is the actual link between the virtual private gateway and the customer gateway. This connection is set up and managed in AWS, and each connection uses two IPsec tunnels for redundancy. So once you have your customer gateway and your virtual private gateway set up, in order to establish the connection, you would click here on VPN connections, click create connection, and here is where you would then select the virtual private gateway and then also select the customer gateway, or you can actually create a new customer gateway at this point as well. And then you can click create and set up the connection between the two. Now, it's also important to touch on exactly what our router is over here in this particular diagram. Well, we haven't talked about routers to this point in this course, and that's because AWS has really dispensed with the concept of having users physically set up and manage a router. However, it is important to understand that route tables are actually part of a router assigned to your VPC. So what AWS does is AWS has a router for your particular account. You just can't manage the actual router itself. They just give you access to the route tables or to be able to manage the route tables that are part of the router. So at any point during this particular course, I could have just swapped out a router for a route table and it would have made sense. But because AWS doesn't have a router as part of the console here, it has route tables, I've been using that in the diagrams in its place. However, you will find that for most hybrid environment diagrams that you may see online, they will have the actual router on the diagram as opposed to the route table. But what's important to know here is that when setting up a VPN, the route table for the subnet you wish to extend must include routes for the on-premise network that are used by the VPN and point them to the virtual private gateway. So for the router or for the actual route tables for this particular subnet, you would need to create a route and have it pointed to the customer gateway over here at the on-premise data center. So it's important to understand that when you're setting up a VPN, you need the customer gateway, the virtual private gateway, you need a route set up in the route table for the subnet that you want to extend to the on-premise network pointing to the customer gateway, and then you can establish a working connection. So that is a quick introduction to VPN and what you need to know for the CSA exam. And with that, we will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.